Inflammation and suffocation and toxification. This is the, the three main causes of all cell disease. Cells run out of energy, and you get uh, sticking points in this chemical A to B to C to D to E uh, to F to G to H. You get little sticking points, and chemical C will build up. Uh, chemical C will build up as you get a sticking point in chemical B. This is where homocysteine becomes problematic. And homocysteine levels start to rise. You can think of homocysteine as being chemical B. When something gets messed up between chemical A and chemical C, I'll tell you what I mean tomorrow, but I want to tell you right now, if you're dealing with heart disease or you're worried about heart disease and any kind of heart disease, atherosclerosis or hypertension or you've had a heart attack, whatever your uh, particular cardiovascular health issue is, there's three little vitamins that you need to know about that are going to lower your homocysteine. It's real, real easy to get. Cost of pennies and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is loaded with these three little elements. I'll tell you about that tomorrow as we continue talking about homocysteine and its connection. It's true, real connection to heart disease, unlike cholesterol and unlike the saturated fat, the very doubtful relationship between saturated fat ingestion and elevated cholesterol levels and heart disease. Nobody doubts the relationship between heart disease and homocysteine levels. And we'll continue talking about this and tell you how you can address this issue tomorrow on the Bright Side. Time to hit our phones, 855-660-4261. Let's go off to... Uh, Let's go to California. Welcome, Marshall, to the bright side. What's up, Marshall? How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good. But um, a couple of months ago, I got a pain in my side, and I got diverticulitis. And I should know this by now, but I still have minor symptoms. Okay. So you wanted some help with that, Marshall? Yes, please. I, and I, I, I pretty much know the diet, but is there a do's and don'ts? Diet on your yeah. web page because if there is, I couldn't find it. No, there's no. I don't think I had did anything on diverticulitis specifically because it's not really that complicated. But your point's well taken. I, I, maybe I'll put that up this week. Uh, in any case, diverticulitis involves little tiny uh, pouches that form uh, that uh, develop on the uh, in the intestine. Those pouches are called technically diverticula. That's the name of the, those pouches and. Diverticulitis is a condition that develops when these little pouches, these little diverticula, diverticuli, uh, become inflamed or they can become infected. Diverticulosis, uh, diverticulosis happens when the pouch is formed. Diverticulitis is an inflammation. So osis is just the formation of those, pouch, of those pouches. Itis is inflammation and infection of those pou pouches, and it can be really, really painful. Here's the deal. Yeah. I, I don't need to tell you, right, Marshall? I've seen people well, with well, it. Well, the first time, but then I started treating it on my own, and now it's down to minimal pain, but I Good still deal. have a little bit. Well, you know what you're doing. Did you get fever or anything? That's not, that's when you really know you have a problem is when you get fever uh, and no, chills. Uh, I, th I thought it was uh, pancreatitis, and it was on the wrong side after I looked it up. So. Was it bloating and pain? It, like was it like a sharp pain and bloating kind of thing? It, it, it's like you know when you're when you're gonna fart or take a crap and you get a little bit of you can feel it going through. It'll stop right there. Okay. Right well, the that's end. a little that's a little bit graphic for our bright side listeners, I'm, but I, yeah, I get the, me. <laughs> I get the gist of what you're saying, Marshall. But, Any yeah, case, here's what you. Then it here's what's really painful right there. Yeah. Well, here's what you need side. to do. Nothing. There's no way you can have an intestinal condition unless you're eating the wrong kind of food. So it's really as simple as that. So your your question is, what kind of foods do you want to eat? Well, first of all, you want to eat no foods. If I had diverticulitis, yeah, I did that for fasting. That's the first thing to do. Um, the symptoms of diverticulitis can be short-term. They can last a couple hours, or they can last a, a week, or they can last more than a week. So uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to stop eating. As soon as you stop eating for even a few hours, you're going to notice your symptoms start to improve. When you return to eating, you want to be very careful about what you're eating, and you want to pick specific foods, and you want to see how your body responds to those foods. First, I would start off with very soft foods or liquids. That's the first thing I would do, liquids probably, soups, smoothies, pre-ground foods, Doctor will tell you uh, that you want to uh, that you want to start doing uh, adding fiber and that's probably a good idea but you want to add fiber very very slowly because you know, fiber can also uh, can also cause problems because fiber when you start to add fiber to your foods and fiber enters into the intestine the colon the intestine has to work even harder and that can form that can cause pouches to form so you want to be very careful about adding fiber to your food but you do need some fiber so you want to 
start off with soups and smoothies, and then gradually have uh, more fibery foods, maybe some vegetables, small amounts of vegetables. I would stay away from super fibery foods like nuts for a while. Uh, and certainly you want to stay away from grains or bread or gluten-containing, any, really any grains or bread or flour, because that can gum up the works. And any uh, uh, dairy and, and uh, cheese kinds of foods can also be problematic. If you have food allergies, food intolerances, you need to stay away from those foods as well. Uh, as far as str- uh, nutritional supplements for diverticulitis, or diverticulosis, uh, the best and the most important are fermented foods and probiotics. Probiotics, number one. And if you have diverticulitis or osis, diverticulosis, you want to be on the Biolumin Nightly Essence, and you don't want to wait a minute. I mean a minute. If you're out there listening, uh, as soon as you stop listening to this program, get on the phone, call Longevity, get the Biolumin Nightly Essence. Marshall, if you're not on the Biolumin Nightly you, Essence. Uh, what are you saying? Bio- Biolumin is the company. B-I-O-L-U-M-I-N, Biolumin, and then they make a product called Nightly Essence. Now, they call it Nightly Essence, but you don't need to take it at night, but that's what they call it. And you can find out all about it either on my website, brightsideben.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Now, certainly there's lots of probiotic supplements out there, but I like this one the best. So this is my recommendation to you. Whatever you decide, however, make sure you do it about 80 to 100 billion units a day and try to use them in divided doses. And in addition, make Make sure you're eating lots of fermented food. The Z radical from longevity can help coat the intestine, help improve the health of the intestine. And then the cells of the intestine, which are running out of energy, this is one of the reasons why these pouches form, the cells of the intestine run out of energy, uh, they feed off of glutamine. The amino acid glutamine provides energy for these uh, intestinal cells. And using glutamine supplements, can, uh, glutamine supplements can also be very helpful. That's G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E, glutamine. I'd be using a teaspoonful of the powder every day. I like the powder better than the pills. They seem to be, uh, you get more value out of the powders. There's a couple more things as well. So hang tight, Marshall. And if you're on hold, uh, hang tight as well. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. I'm Dr. Joel Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy. There's no reason why you shouldn't live to be at least 100 and have a great time getting there. And I'm going to give you a free copy of my lecture that tells you exactly how to do it. In fact, after you've lived a long and healthy life, there should be only two documents in your medical chart, a birth certificate and a death certificate. I'm Dr. Wallach with a warning. If you have a four-inch medical chart, if you take prescription drugs for high cholesterol, high blood pressure, arthritis, joint pains, and other health issues, the medical profession is failing you. They're using you for an ATM machine. My free lecture is going to reveal what pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know. There's been groundbreaking research and discovery on how to effectively treat or eliminate over 900 different diseases naturally. It's all in my free lecture called Deadly Recipe. So call toll-free 1-855-79-YOUNG. Again, that's toll-free 1-855-79-YOUNG. 1-855-79-YOUNG. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curb appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. Stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone at 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855-955-7866. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. 
installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows. Pause and rewind live TV. Even skip the commercials. Watch local channels, too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Not just an alternative to the mainstream media. We're the premier independent talk radio network. We are G. All right, we are back on the bright side talking to Marshall in California. Marshall, I'm going to go really fast here, buddy, because I want to get to as many calls as I can, but there's lots you could do, and I wanna, I'm going to go fast, okay, bro? So uh, okay. you're gonna, you might have to... Listen to the uh, archives at Ben Fuchs Archives or BrightSideBen.com. So, number one, probiotics. That's probably the most important thing you could do. You want to do an elimination diet, start off by fasting for a day or two, start to introduce liquid foods, soups, and smoothies, and then start to slowly introduce more fibery foods, especially vegetables. If you can grind those vegetables up in a Vitamix and make a, a liquid out of them, that's even better. Uh, uh, then you can use glutamine powder. Uh, as well as the Z radical and other slippery kind of mucilaginous uh, plant material. Something called DGL can help. That stands for deglycer- deglycerinized licorice. Uh, also, you can use uh, uh, slippery elm, which is mucilaginous. Colt's foot is another mucilaginous herb. You can make teas with the, these kinds of herbs. You can buy these herbs at Whole Foods or on the Internet and make teas out of the marshmallow root which has nothing to do with marshmallow, by the way. Uh, marshmallow root, uh, you can make a, a, lic- a marshmallow root tea, slippery elm tea, and that can help soothe the intestine as well. Uh, also, if you have any conditions with sugar metabolism, something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO, that can affect uh, diverticulosis or diverticulitis, so making sure that you're processing carbohydrates effectively or even laying off sweet foods uh, and sugars and, and carbohydrate kinds of things, fruit juices, etc. that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that you might want to think about. Uh, magnesium can be helpful for the digestive tract. Uh, and then fatty vitamins as well, especially vitamins A and vitamins D. There's some really interesting relationships between these two vitamins and intestinal health. Not only will uh, problems with the intestine compromise your absorption of vitamin A and D, but also, as it turns out, deficiencies in vitamin A and D may, in turn, cause problems with the intestine. So making sure you're getting some sun. If you want to supplement with vitamin D, 5,000 international units a day of vitamin D3 and 20,000 international units of vitamin A is a good idea. And then in addition to the Z radical, uh, aloe vera can help also. I know I gave you a ton of information, uh, but uh, if you go back to the archives, you can review that stuff. And thanks so much for your call, Marshall. Appreciate it very much. Let's go to Florida and welcome Rod to the bright side. What's up, Rod? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, Ben. Uh, can you tell me uh, about uh, multiple sclerosis and what the... Yes. Uh, Easy, easy peasy, easy peasy. Number one, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease where the body attacks itself. It specifically attacks the nerves uh, and the myelin part of the nerves. Anytime the body is attacking itself, anytime you have an immune system defect where the immune system actually attacks self rather than not self, it attacks the body it's supposed to be defending, the first thing you want to focus on is why is the immune system being, why, why, what is hypersensitizing the immune system? Why is, it, why is it not behaving? Why is the immune system misbehaving? And you'll find oftentimes, most of the time, something is getting into the body inappropriately that's triggering 
the immune system. The parts of the body, the, the organs of the body, the glands of the body, the nerves of the body, if you look at the immune system, to the immune system, these different parts of the body look like food. They're composed of the same thing that a hamburger is composed of, or that soy is composed of, or that bread is composed of. The, the p- uh, protein constituency of foods is the exact same as the protein constituency of our organs and our glands and the different parts of our body. So when the immune system learns to react to gluten, for example, or to react to some kind of protein that's in soy or protein that's in eggs or whey or anything,